If you're a fully grown person with access to the internet, things probably feel a bit confusing at the moment. Deep fakes, fake news, libertarian AI bots on Twitter, all creating the sensation of our post-truth world. But surely among this pile of stinking artifice, we still have a few things left to trust. Surely at the very least, I can rely on what's right in front of me, what I see with my own two eyes. Well, here's a list of horrible facts. A lot of what you see is generated by your brain rather than your eyes. Your sex, cultural upbringing, and even the language you speak affects your vision. And perhaps most shockingly, your social prejudices can change what you see. Now I know what you're thinking, the bold man's talking nonsense, but here's something that might change your mind. Focus on the cross in the middle of the screen. Just keep your vision right on that cross. Now you might start to notice over time that these faces in the periphery of your vision start to look a little bit horrifying. Of course, they're not actually changing. This is quite literally all in your head. So why is your brain telling your porky pies? Well, as it turns out, your vision is always focused on one central spot, the fovea, which is about the size of your thumbnail at our arm's length. Outside of this, your peripheral eyesight seems just as detailed, but research shows it's actually far less accurate. Your brain is filling it in constantly, generating images to give the illusion of coherent eyesight. And every now and again, the brain can't keep up with filling in these blanks, and you notice a discrepancy, which is why those faces begin to look terrifying. In fact, this illusion might even be the result of your brain joining the faces together, working under the assumption that it's seeing a single person. Now, obviously, these things are all incredibly unsettling, but they also raise the question, can we really trust anything we see? Like you, I was left feeling confused and a little bit sick about only seeing a fraction of reality. So I travelled to the University of Sussex to meet Anil Seth, who has quite the theory about our sense of vision. Just imagine being a brain. You're, you're locked inside the skull. All you've got access to as a brain are these electrical signals that come in through the eyes and the ears that are only ever indirectly related to what's out there brain is always making predictions about the causes of the sensory signals that it gets. It's a process of active, top-down, creative interpretation. So we never see the world as it really is. We only ever see the brain's best guess or best model of what's actually out there. It turns out the brain is bombarded with far too much stuff every second to actually process all of it. So over the course of evolution, it developed to focus on the essentials and make predictions about the rest, which is why these illusions work. But even those essentials, that thumbnail worth of reality we'd like to imagine is ubiquitous, differs completely person to person. Research implies there's even visual disparity between the sexes. Women seem to differentiate more clearly between shades of colour, whilst men seem to excel at detecting fast-moving objects in the distance. Differences that researchers believe might come down to variable levels of testosterone, but it's not just biology that changes what we see. It turns out even our culture messes with our perception. People who speak languages with more specific terms for colours, for instance the Greek distinction between light blue and dark blue as two separate words, actually see that difference. Research shows that after living in the UK for some time, Greek people will start to see two shades of blue as more similar. This optical illusion, in which the top line appears shorter than the lower one, is far more likely to work on you if you grew up in an environment with buildings and straight corners. People who live in round huts are unlikely to be tricked. We like to think we're all seeing a fixed and universal reality, but it turns out the uniqueness of our own minds, our DNA and our cultural identity all contort our visual perception. In fact, the reality we see is so malleable, we can even flip it on its head. Back in the 1930s, a Russian scientist forced his subjects to wear silly goggles like these and remain, sometimes for weeks, with upside down vision. <laughs> Now, as well as being funny, this experiment was also pretty interesting. You see, the participants' brains were able to adapt shockingly quickly. The upside-down world became the norm and thus seemed right-side up. Something I'm hoping will also happen for me. Starlight uh, yeah. Out beyond your window <laughs> Speaks all Remarkably, the lens in our eye actually casts an upside-down image on our retina. But by the time our brains have encoded this image, we perceive the world as upright. And this might be why after some time, these remarkably confused test subjects began to function surprisingly well, with some even able to cycle through a busy city, something I also sort of did. I just don't, I don't have to break on this thing. All around us, 
Catch me when I fall out of your But things got even weirder when the test subjects removed the goggles. Their brains were so used to the upside down world that upon taking them off, they experienced the same disorientation as when they first put them on. The striking conclusion of this experiment is that even when our realities change enormously, our brains adapt. Something as seemingly ridiculous as an upside down world quickly feels completely normal. And this is because our brain understands reality as what it's used to, not necessarily what's real, which actually poses some serious problems for society. If we all see the world slightly differently, then we're all going to be biased in slightly different ways as well. And the worrying thing here is we're not going to realise this because the, the world seems to be the way it is to us. So if I see things to be a particular way, it doesn't seem like I'm applying any particular bias to it. As early as the 1950s, scientists showed fans of two football clubs identical footage of a match. They found that the fans perceived moments of foul play entirely differently depending on their club allegiance, disagreeing completely about what they were seeing. Now obviously this is shocking, football fans being historically among the most level-headed and rational people in society, but studies of European protests showed similar results. Participants in these experiments perceived the actions of police and protesters entirely differently based on their own ages and backgrounds. This all takes us to 2017, when the American Psychological Association unearthed perhaps the most shocking disparity in vision ever discovered. They asked 950 online participants from the United States to look at images of various men and judge the size and potential threat factor of each. Time and time again, these participants perceived black men to be larger and more threatening than equally sized white men. Even something as seemingly obvious and universal as size was totally malleable to people's perception. Horrifyingly, it seems that our social bias and prejudices can actually distort what we see. Other research showed that white female college students perceived black children as less innocent than their white counterparts, and white male police officers had a dehumanization bias against black people, more able to match them up with photos of big cats and apes. Of course, we don't need to look far to see the dangers of this. In the worlds of policing and law, bias this extreme can mean life or death. But if some of that bias is unconscious, entrenched in our human senses, how can we ever hope to resolve it? Well, and Neil's team are developing something that might mark a step in the right direction. The perception census, an attempt to codify the disparity in our senses. The purpose of this project is pretty simple. We'll never be able to experience each other's realities, but what if we could shed light on the diversity of our inner worlds and comprehensively understand the differences? This is a set of online simple interactive illusions and experiments and surveys. The perception census is a way of, of trying to understand this hidden landscape and convey to people that take part some of the magic and mystery of their own minds, the power of their own perception. As part of the perception census, scientists have also opened the dream machine, an immersive experience where participants close their eyes and are faced with a combination of white light and sound, designed to generate an individual and hallucinatory experience. The subjective sensations of these experiences can then be documented in the census. As you can see, even when faced with the same colourless strobe lighting, the creations of people's minds are fascinatingly eclectic. Just acknowledging that we all see the world in our own unique ways is really powerful because it gives us a way of understanding each other's perspectives. How did my brain do that? It's a real kind of revelation that you've got that sitting in you all the time. You can do that anytime. It was the most vivid, kaleidoscopic, unimaginable thing. It's, sort of, it's really hard to believe that's something your brain is just generating with some strobe lighting. Our eyesight, the most basic foundation of our reality, is subjective, hallucinatory, and often completely wrong, which leaves us guessing at just how deep and murky the separations between our realities really are. Before resolving these inner differences, we'll need to understand them. So it seems long overdue that now, six million years into the complex evolution of our ancestors, scientists are attempting to recognize these divergences and illuminate just where our worlds collide, tangle, and contradict one another. It's safe to say, They've got a lot of work to do.